protecting the environment for future generations. That's the grand vision. When you look at a river, what comes to mind? Do you think about the history of it? Do you think about the recreational use? Maybe you would think about the health conditions. Or what do you think about what impact man's decisions could have on it? The local natives, who are referred to as the Anishinaabe people, use the river for hunting, fishing, gathering, transportation, and recreational use. The Borman River used to be filled with several hundred native species until hunting and trapping became more important to northern Michigan's daily needs. Logging became a popular job during the 1700s that led into the early 1900s. The logging process in the beginning was quite simple. The logs would be cut and relocated to the river. They would then float down to a splash dam and clutter. This is the point in the process where the splash dams was blown up. The explosion would create such a force that it would almost guarantee the arrival of all the logs in the bay. The downfall to this process is that it would tear up the river banks and cause erosion. This erosion would cause the water to get cloudy and is unbearable for cold water, native and non-native fish species, especially brook trout. Another downfall to this process was the sediment and soot from the logs and banks being carried into the bay. Recreation use was pushed away by commercial use. Since the abundance of fish was dramatically changed, the access of the remaining fish was blocked off by the temporary dams called splash dams. This forced the Anishinaabe peoples to relocate other fishing grounds. The many trees that Anishinaabe people use for medicinal purposes, such as cedar, black ash, big tooth and trembling aspen, and northern white cedar, were destroyed to make way for logs to get to the river. There were sites that the Anishinaabe used to grow wild rice, sweet grass, and cattails that were also ruined by the logging process. The river was one of the main ways for the Anishinaabe people to travel because it shortened the travel time. These setbacks seemed to be permanent until now. The decision to rebuild the Borman River will improve to be beneficial to the Six County area. Not only would it ensure that a fatal flood to the Grand Traverse County would not happen, but it will open the doors to recreational use that were closed in the 1700s. Currently, there's a global climate change issue with different explanations of the cause. With the climate change, the opening of the natural passageway would help maintain the area's carbon dioxide problem. With the restoration of the river, the wetland area will increase by 200 acres, which would improve habitat diversity. It would allow many species to return to the river, including the cold water fish. The foliage coverage helps many aquatic native species that pertain to water quality and temperature. The temperature has to be cold in order for native species like brook trout to survive. The riverbed also has to be deep enough and have a good base of cobblestone or gravel for fish beds. Not only would the restoration be beneficial to the nature of the area, but would benefit people who are in the area as well. It provides opportunities for the population to see the quality improvement over time and allow studies for brook trout. It will also allow fishing, boating, kayaking, swimming for those interested in activities that are non-scientific. To live in an area that over time has changed drastically because of harvesting natural resources and now being preserved and restored is amazing. Northern Michigan is a beautiful place with rivers carved by the glaciers. Although the Borman River was changed by the dams, the Anishinaabe people still reside here and are proud to call this place home. <laughs>